You know, I'm gonna be honest, this Back to the Future Part 2 hat is honestly a really special hat to me, and considering it is a movie related hat, and I've got two other movie posters and I'm all about movies, I'm actually thinking about making this hat a everyday thing. So I'm actually thinking about wearing this hat regularly, and wearing it in every single one of my future videos. Because I love this hat, it's really some of the only chances I get to wear it, because it's so special I don't really like to wear it out in public, so I really like to more wear it to myself. So if I start doing it here for my channel, I think it might be a better way for me to put it in use. So I'm thinking about wearing this hat regularly. If you agree, let me know in the comments below, because I want to start wearing this in my future videos. Um, Corey? Uh, yes, Jimmy? I've just been checking on your YouTube channel, and I've come to realize that on your Supersonic Corey channel, didn't you upload your very, very first video called 25 Things About Me? Uh, yes I did. On Supersonic Corey, I did upload my very first YouTube video, and it was definitely called 25 Things About Me. Uh, can't say I can't recall, no. Well, it was actually uploaded on August 5th, 2014. That's today! Well, let's celebrate then! <laughs> what is up everyone, and welcome to a very, very special video, because today is officially my two year anniversary of my being on YouTube, basically. While this current Chorus Reviews channel is about six months old at the time, however, my overall lifespan of being on YouTube, making YouTube videos, being an overall content creator, actually started exactly two years ago. On August 5th, 2014, I uploaded my very first YouTube video, which was called 25 Things About Me, and it was uploaded on an older channel called Supersonic Corey, which I no longer use anymore, which I could get into, but I don't really want to because it's a really long story. But all you really need to know is that this day, 2014, was when I first uploaded my first video, and because of that, this is officially my two-year anniversary. And to celebrate my anniversary of being on YouTube for this long, I thought, why not celebrate by doing a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while now, and that is a video about my thoughts on film criticism. Because, as you guys know, I'm a massive movie nut. And the more I've been doing YouTube and the more I've been doing movie reviews, the more I've really gained a passion about the film industry. And I've especially been doing lots of research in the film industry over this last six months. Within just the last six months, I've been learning a lot about cinematography and a lot about storytelling and the three-act structure and writing a good script and writing dialogue and all of this other stuff about filmmaking as well as learning how to get better at film reviewing. Now, this is a pretty unorganized video. I haven't really taken any notes or anything. All of this is basically at the top of my head. But I basically want to make a special video that celebrates my anniversary by sort of looking back at my older videos, seeing how I've improved what I currently like to do for my own current videos, and I actually think I might even show you some of my first few videos that I've ever done on my older channel. One thing that is great about doing anniversaries and sort of looking back at what you've already done, it really allows you to really get a contrast of how far you've come as far as YouTube goes. Because I definitely think that over the last two years, I have definitely improved. So I think it'd be pretty fun to show you some of my older videos and tell you about some of the stuff that I'm still proud of, even though it's been done two years ago, and some things that I really feel like that I've improved upon and something that I would do differently if I was doing those videos again to this day. So I thought, why not start this video off by showing you some of my very first videos. I'm going to give you a bit of a glimpse of my very, very first video, 25 Things About Me. This is the video where all of this began. Enjoy. Keep in mind though that I do look and sound a bit different because this video was made two years ago. I was 13 at the time and I'm just about to turn 16 so that should be enough for you to know. Since I was a bit younger I do look and sound a bit differently but nevertheless this is my very first video so I'm not going to show you all of it I'm just going to give you a glimpse of what the video was like. Hello everyone Corey here and welcome to my channel. I am a new YouTuber, and when I say I'm a new YouTuber, I mean this is literally my very first YouTube video ever. I'm here to introduce you to my new channel, 
I'm gonna be doing different bits and pieces, just add variety in my channel. I'll be doing impressions, of movie, video game reviews, and so on and so forth to, as I just said, add variety to my channel. But since I'm new to YouTube, I thought it would be relevant if you got to know me. So, here are my 25 things you should know about me. Number one, my name is Corey. That is probably the most important thing you'll know. Don't forget it, you guys. Number two, I am currently 13 years old, turning 14 this August. Number three, I have a mother, father, older sister, and a dog named Bo. Number four, I am the youngest member of my family. Number five, I'm also the second tallest in my family. One thing I've got to say I'm really proud of on my older videos is my lighting because at the moment I feel like I have pretty professional lighting. You guys can't see and I might show you a bit more of it later on in this video but I don't use natural lighting. At the moment I've actually got my curtains closed to block out the natural lights and I've got these big massive lights as you can see that the closer my uh, hands get to the camera they're a lot more bright colour, and that's because I'm using proper lighting. I'll go more into detail about my lighting, but at the moment, basically I'm just saying that I'm using artificial lighting. But when I first did this very first video, I had no experience with lighting. And so, I'm actually pretty impressed with what I did. Basically, what I did is that I had natural lighting, and I basically had the curtains open, and I let that light it up. I do admit that it lo does look pretty consistent because one half of me was uh, sort of more bright and the other half was a bit dark and that does look pretty inconsistent but for natural lighting and the fact that the window was on the side of me and that's something I couldn't really fix unless I changed the angle then I'm still pretty okay with it. I actually think it's pretty decent lighting. And as for the background itself other than the lighting I'm also very impressed with what I did with it because at the time I didn't have these two posters. These two posters are actually pretty brand new. I got them just a couple of months ago, actually. So since I didn't have those kind of posters, I had a different idea for my Supersonic Cory channel. As you can see, I filmed in front of a Avengers poster, which I actually still have. It's actually just right over there at that door. So if you, if I show the camera, you will actually still be able to see that my Avengers poster from that older video is still there. Admittedly, the poster has been relocated, but this is it. This is the poster that I used to film in front of. But now it's these ones. So there you go, you just saw the background that I used to use. And admittedly, the fan in the frame is a bit distracting, but... You know, it's the only video where I have something like that in the frame, so... I'm pretty proud of it. How do I think the video itself holds up? Well, I definitely think it is pretty cheesy and there are definitely things I do laugh about it. But at the same time, I was pretty unexperienced or inexperienced, I'm not too sure. However, I just didn't have that much experience with YouTube or making proper videos because at that point, I was only familiar with making proper movies. But I wasn't familiar with making videos where I just talk to the camera. I wouldn't say it's full on embarrassing. There are a couple of things that I do think is a bit cheesy. But at the same time, there are honestly some jokes that I made that I think are genius and I still think are hilarious to this day. Mostly this one, and this is one that I am so proud of. Even if I was doing this video today, I would still make this joke. Uh, sort of. Number 17. I do not have an iPhone of any sort. <laughs> an iPod Touch. Can you be quiet with the music? Sorry, couldn't resist. When doing those zooming bits, I should have been a bit more careful with my facial expressions, however, the joke itself I think is genius. But you want to know what's even more genius? After two years, I actually do have an iPhone. <laughs> Slightly cheesy, but in a charming way. I'm still pretty proud of it, and if I was full on embarrassed with it, I would have taken it down, but I'm not. I definitely think it's a charming video. I think it's... I think that's the best way to describe it. I think it's charming. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to see the full video, because I only showed you a snippet of the video. The actual video itself is five minutes long. I think my biggest issue with it is mainly the fact that I sped it up, which I think is a bit of a problem because you can hear that it sped up and I think that was because I was too concerned about the length of the video. Because these days I don't really concern about the length, it, it just takes as long as it needs to take. And I think it would have been fine if the video went on for one or two minutes longer. 
But that's really just a nitpick. For my first video, I'm actually really proud of it considering it's only a little bit cheesy and I made this video two years ago. But I think the video where I really can show my biggest improvements is my very, very first movie review. Back in 2014, one of my main motivations of starting up a YouTube channel was reviewing movies. I didn't have a true, fully big vision as to what I wanted my channel to be like. So I wanted to add some bits of variety. However, I do admit that one of my main priorities of doing YouTube was starting movie reviews. And I think if you watch my Lego movie review, which is the very first one I ever did, and then you watch one of my newer reviews, you can definitely tell I have definitely improved. For size, can you believe I actually thought it would be a smart move to film during the night with the lights on? <laughs> I kind of wish I knew about color correction at the time. In all seriousness, no, that is definitely a lesson I have learned in the past. If I am going to make a video, I only film at night if I'm using these kind of lights because they make it more friendly for filming at night. However, if I didn't have these lights, I would definitely make sure I'm filming during the day. One also thing I've noticed is that as I really began to grow and really gain my own style and structure of my reviews, I really started to notice that I've got sort of like a template for my movie reviews and I've got sort of like a system slash style. And I think some of my first reviews, like my Hotel for Dogs or Lego Me reviews, showed that I was still in the middle of looking for that category slash system. If you watch my older YouTube reviews, like my Hotel for Dogs review, my Lego Movie review, and some of those other ones, I was pretty new to the idea of reviewing a movie and the whole system idea, and I definitely think it shows. I was also very new about what kind of points you should make in a movie review. For example, Let's look at the Lego movie. Now, if I was looking at it today, what I would probably do now is that I would probably look at the three-act structure, look at the pacing, and I would also look at the premise, and if it has any underlining themes, do I like it, the themes? Like, are there any good themes or anything like that? In my actual video, however, you can definitely tell I wasn't as experienced, and so I kind of made a few mistakes. <laughs> What I ended up doing is that I ended up comparing it to The Matrix and saying that it was very, very similar by explaining these character parallels, and that's really all I did. Which I don't have too much of a problem with, like, I may have done it myself even by today's standards. However, it wouldn't be the focus of the story category, and that's all I spoke about. I also spoke about the main characters and how I thought Emma was relatable because I'm not good at uh, Lego, but at the same time I was still very unexperienced with character arcs and character development and personalities and flaws and all that stuff. And so all I end up talking about is the fact that I relate to him just simply because I'm not good at Lego without the instructions, which is true. Still true. One thing I did say in the review that I am relatively proud of is what I spoke about the animation, even though my opinion has completely changed. I spoke about that I knew how the film was done, I spoke about how I knew that the film was done with CG but looks like it was done by stop motion, and I also spoke a little bit about how I thought it was really creative of them to make sure that absolutely everything was made of Lego. Which I do agree is a pretty cool feature, and now I think something as detailed or something as creative as that, I'm glad that even my 13 year old self actually managed to pick up that kind of thing about the animation, so that is definitely something I'm still proud of. Another slight nitpick I've noticed is that I basically glossed over the flaws I had with the film. I basically say, oh the only flaws I have with this movie is A, blah 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 blah, B, blah blah blah, blah and C, blah 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 blah. It was very rushed over, and if I was doing it now, I would have gone in a bit more detail. However, one thing I find mind-blowing, and this is a compliment about the old video, by the way, is the fact that even though I didn't even know about it at the time, in fact, in pretty much all of my videos, I did an excellent job of obeying the rule of thirds. And that is something I'll get more into later on in this video. Now, some of you guys are probably wondering, Corey, why exactly did you just show us some of your older videos? Well, the main reason for that is basically to show you that over the last two years, I've definitely improved in my channel because I feel like I've picked up a lot more great tips and I feel like there's more production quality and I feel like that I'm more proud of the stuff that I say in my reviews. I'm really proud about how far I've come, but one thing I'm really looking forward to is getting even better. One of my ultimate goals with my channel is to keep on improving as much as I possibly can. I can just see it now. Two years from now, I can be watching this video 
and I will basically be thinking, yeah, there are definitely some things that I would be doing differently. And chorus reviews, if you're watching this now in the future, like if you're watching this in 2018 or something, and I know you probably are, future me, I did not know about those problems that you were probably thinking about right now. Unless it's lighting or colour correction. Damn, Inception, this is confusing. Moving on. Even two years into the future, I can see myself being a lot better then than I am right now. I can always see myself getting better and better and better, no matter how far I go into the future. Because it's something that is always last. You don't come to an ultimate goal. You can always find ways to improve. And that's something I want to do. I want to keep on making my videos better. And I feel like that I'm definitely making progress since over the last two years, I already have improved. I have made a lot of progress and there are definitely things I have learned from in the past. And I'm looking forward to learning more cool tips about uh, making videos in the future. And so it was pretty fun to be able to see how far I've come and how much further I might be able to go in the future. And that is the first part of the video I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to sort of overlay and give you a bit of a glimpse of what my channel used to be like and what I'm like now. And there are definitely still some videos that I made back in Supersonic Glory that I'm still pretty proud of to this day. In fact, there was one video that I was working on that never made it to the internet. And that's not because I wasn't proud of the video, it's just that while editing it, I had some really serious rendering issues and I could not finish the video, so I just gave up because it was I was having that much trouble with it. But I kind of wished that I was able to finish it because I'm so proud of how creative the video was. So much so I might even make that video sometime in the near future since I'm a lot better at rendering. And that was a video where I compare the book of Coraline to the movie. Because Coraline is one of the few movies where I love the movie so much I went out and read the actual book. And I think the book is almost as good as the actual film. And I had such a creative skit and some of the jokes I think are really funny. And I just am really sad to see it go. And this was a video that I didn't make too far into when I first started YouTube. And I can just, from the jokes I remember... I still am pretty sad to see that video go, and so that should tell you something. In fact, I am thinking about redoing that video, because it was a good one. I am sad that it didn't get to see the light of day. But anyway, there's another part I want to talk about on this video, and that is basically tips about film criticism. I want to talk about film criticism in itself. And the reason why is because lately I've had a couple of YouTubers asking me for tips and advice because they've been telling me that they are aspiring film critics and they want to start reviewing movies on their own channel and they went ahead and they asked me for tips and advice. And for a long time I have been kind of procrastinating. I just wanted to make sure I was mentally ready and prepared so I could give the right advice. And so for any of you who have wanted advice or tips about film criticism, this is a video for you. Keep watching. One thing I want to keep in mind though, no matter what I say in these videos, these are not flat out rules. You can do whatever you want. You can review anything you want. You can review it in any way you want. You're basically your own man or woman. Basically everything I'm about to say is not really things that you have to do, but they're more of a guideline. Some tips that I personally learned and every time I follow these rules it makes my videos better. So lately I feel like I've become very confident as far as the way I structure my reviews and the way I make my reviews. And so I feel like I feel pretty confident on giving you my tips and my advice and the things that I personally do to make the video as good as I can make them. For size I'm going to give you my structure. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how I make all of my videos. Basically every time I do a movie review, what is my template? What do I do and how I plan what I'm going to say in every single one of my reviews? And here it is. The first thing I do is that if I have some sort of fancy skit or some sort of joke that I want to make, then I'll start off by just making that joke. And then in my editing, I'll insert my intro, and you guys all know what my intro is, I played it earlier in this video. But if I don't have a skit or a joke or anything, I just place the intro right there and I go on with the actual review. The next thing I like to do is I like to stand on the left side of the frame, and I like to just keep this frame empty, and so... At the moment it looks pretty silly and it looks like I'm just really terrible at cinematography. However, what I do is that I stand here on this side because in post-production it leaves room for me to leave the poster of whatever movie I'm reviewing right now. So for an example, if I was reviewing Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, I would be able to... Well... I don't think I'd have to edit that into the show, I think the screen speaks for itself. So I would enthusiastically introduce the name of the movie, I would say the name of the movie, 
sometimes talk about the director and year of release if it's not a new release. If it's released outside the current year, I'll probably mention the name of the release and one or two of the main actors in the film. I try and cram all of that stuff into one big epic sentence that basically introduces my movie review. So I start off by going something like along the lines of Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol was released in 2011. It was directed by Brad Bird and stars Tom Cruise. Spoiler alert, that is exactly how I'm going to open up my Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol review. After I finished introducing the movie and then I got rid of the poster in post-production, I then cut back to when I'm standing in the middle of the frame, kind of like what I'm doing now. So I stand on the side to make room for a certain image that I'm talking about, so if I'm reviewing a movie or I'm talking about a certain movie, I will move to the side and have that poster, but if I'm not, I'll just simply move and stand back into the frame. And then I like to go in a very specific direction, what I try to do. Now I don't always follow my own rule, and that's mainly because when I'm taking notes I get a bit muddled up with the whole order, however what I try to do is I try to hit certain categories in a certain order. I try to hit from story, protagonist, antagonist, animation or action depending on the genre and if the soundtrack stands out I'll talk about the music as well and I try to hit it in that order. So what I like to do is I like to go through all these categories and then I talk about the negatives of the film at the end if it's a positive review and I talk about the positives at the end if it's a negative review and if it's just decent or alright, I guess the good and bad things about it just interlock within each other and it just kind of weaves. Now again, I do get kind of mixed up and that's really more of the fault of the way I organise my notes and I just can't be bothered going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to make the order correct. You don't have to do it exactly as I did, but that's something I like to do in all my videos. I like to give it at least somewhat of a structure. I also love to give a lot of meat in my reviews and this is one of my most important things and I always stress about when I'm talking about making a good review. I always try and support what I say with evidence. Something I've been learning over the last couple of years is learning to use evidence. Because if you have an opinion, that's all fine and dandy if you have an opinion, but if you have an opinion and then you use actual events or quotes from the movie and you use it as evidence to support what you're saying, it will make your opinion that much stronger and it will sound more like a fact than it does sound like an opinion. For example, if I was talking about Independence Day Resurgence and I said it isn't until halfway through the film when the alien mothership finally lands on the planet, that would be enough evidence for me to say that it's kind of slow. Or if I'm talking about the fact that I don't remember the names of any of the characters in Independence Day, that's basically enough to say that I don't remember any of the characters. Now, it's pretty hard to get the balance because you don't want to go overboard. If you're doing a spoiler-free review, you don't want to give anything away. And so you kind of need to trust your instincts on how to give the evidence, but how to avoid spoilers. But I can't stress enough, if you have evidence, it will definitely support your opinions. One of my biggest examples of this working is when I reviewed The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's a pretty positive review and I talk about why I personally liked it a lot more than the other critics because that film was critically hated and I spoke about why I personally thought it was a good movie. One of my YouTube friends named Movie Mania TV said in the comments that he absolutely disagreed and he spoke about why he didn't like the film and then later on he told me that as much as he disagreed, he did have to admit that my points were very well made because I tried to have as much evidence as I can. So that's the main thing, if you have evidence people will definitely understand where you're coming from and if you use evidence, people will go okay, now I get why he feels about that movie. Trust me, evidence does magic. That's why I love evidence. I also really love to give a lot of context and meat about a film and really not only explain how I feel about a movie, like what do I think of it, do I think it's good or bad, but I also like to talk about why it's good or bad. If I was reviewing Inside Out, I wouldn't just go oh, Inside Out's a movie and it's really, really good and you should definitely see it. I would more go, Inside Out is a brilliant movie because it has great underlying themes and it's an excellent coming of age story as well as becoming a great drama and blah, 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 blah. You get what I mean. I would give context and I'd try and give evidence and really support why I feel a certain way about a movie. And you know what? I'm actually getting really hot again. Just like my Pixar Quotes 2 video, I'm taking this jacket off. I'm getting really hot. One thing that Chris Duckman said in his video of On Film Criticism, he makes a really, really great point talking about if you're going to make a negative review, you should take to account that somebody who watched your negative review might actually consider that that's a movie that they might enjoy based on your description of the film. 
which I definitely think is a great thing to keep in mind when you're reviewing a movie. So what I like to do is that when I'm reviewing a movie, what I like to do is that I'd love to describe what the film is about, kind of like what Chris Duckman does. So what I also do is not only do I like to summarise what the film is, like what's it called, who it's directed by and who's in it and all that stuff, but I also like to give a two to three sentence summary explaining the premise of the film, but I don't go very far into it. What I like to do is I like to give a synopsis slash summary, kind of like what you would read on the back of the Blu-ray cover. Because in my opinion, there are two purposes for a movie review. The first one is to basically inform a viewer about a certain movie. You want to let them know what the movie is, what's it called, what genre is it in, who's in it, what's it about, and that sort of thing, and a little bit about your opinion on whether or not you think they should see it, and why you, they should or shouldn't see it. Here's something you do not want to do with your review. Imagine that there is a viewer, and he sees your video, and they have never heard of the movie you're reviewing and they decide to click on it because they want to learn more about it because maybe they're intrigued by the title and they just want to learn more about the film that they just found out about because of your YouTube thumbnail. So they click on the video and they click on the video because they want to learn more about it and whether or not it's worth seeing. So they want a good description of what the film is like, what it's about, what the genre is, who's in it and that sort of thing. And so the last thing you want to do is have a movie review and by the time the person gets to the end of that video they still know nothing about the movie. And that is one thing you do not want to do with your review. That is why I try to summarise what the film is about in every single one of my reviews. Well, at least my more recent ones. Another thing I like to try and do, and this is something that is a little bit more tricky, but while you're expressing your opinions, another advantage of giving evidence is that it allows you to sort of give a good description of the film as you're talking about it. Because the way you describe the film, whether you're talking good things or bad things about it, it does a great job of describing the film so your viewer can piece together in their head if it sounds like a movie that they might enjoy or might not enjoy. For example, if you're talking about an action film and you're praising it and you're talking about how you think it's really, really good, and then you would give your evidence supporting why you like the action in this movie, but your viewer will be able to piece together what the action might be like and they might be able to think to themselves, that doesn't sound like my cup of tea, I think I might watch something else. And vice versa, you could be giving a very negative review talking about why you don't like the action, you could be talking about there's all these problems, and they will be able to, again, piece together, that sounds like something I might actually enjoy, I'm not going to be bothered by that opinion, I'm going to see that movie. So you want to be very careful and try and make sure you're still giving description about the film as you're giving your opinion, without giving away spoilers. So that's definitely something you want to try and do. You want to try and make sure that while you're giving your own opinions, you want to also in some way describe the film and so the viewers themselves can piece together what you've described about the film and they can use your description to decide for themselves whether or not they might want to see that movie that you're talking about, regardless of your opinion. Because films are very, very subjective and I know this because there are movies that I like that everyone else seems to hate and I hate other movies that everyone else seems to like. So the films are subjective. Now I know this sounds extremely hard, but this is something that more comes naturally, and as you practice, it's something that you start to pick up by yourself, but it's something that I try to do in my reviews. One other thing I would like to talk about is your personality. It is very important that you be yourself. Now I know that everyone talks about this and it sounds pretty cliche, but it's true. While I definitely like to show influences and inspiration from Chris Stockman, I definitely try and put a lot of myself into my videos. Because even right now, as I'm talking to you right this second, I'm just being myself. I like being my own personality. And the main reason why I did stuff like my Pixar quote videos, because those are videos where I'm just being myself. Sure, again, I like to show inspiration from Chris Stockman, but I'm not trying to copy Chris Stockman. I feel like I'm enough of my own person and I try to just be myself. My style is basically giving a lot of evidence and a lot of meat because while I say you should give evidence and meat, you don't have to go as overboard as I do. It's just my style. Another thing I highly recommend you try and do is be very enthusiastic about your reviews. Now, you don't have to go overboard, like you don't have to be incredibly enthusiastic, waving your arms everywhere and screaming at the top of your lungs. You don't have to go overboard with enthusiasm. What I just mean is that put energy and passion and make it sound like you actually care about what you're talking about. I've honestly got people telling me that they subscribe to my channel just because they really like my energy and enthusiasm. 
I try and describe and I try to give my reviews of movies, but I also try and do it with a passionate way to show that I really do care about the subject I'm talking about and I'm actually having fun with my channel. I really like to emphasize on words, I love to give body language, I love to really put emotion to my reviews. If I absolutely despise a movie, I will say it in an angry way. If I love a movie, I will be talking very excited about it. Because if I was just this big emotionalist person, and I spoke like this. Would you watch me? What is up everyone? And today I am reviewing a movie. I am reviewing a movie called Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Now Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol is a great movie and I definitely think that you should see it. If I spoke like that in all of my videos, would you really watch me? I'm pretty sure you wouldn't. So I like to put a lot of passion to my videos, so instead of sounding that, I sound more like... Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol is a movie released in 2011, and it stars, you know, I've already said this before, I'm not saying it again. Now, you don't have to go as far as I just did just then, but you get what I mean. I like to put in emotion into my reviews. Just let me have that joke, please! As far as lighting goes, it really is up to you, but what I currently do is that I use artificial lighting. I use a very special lighting system. I've got a big pole that's in the shape of a T, and underneath that T thing, I've got two big lights that have baking paper over the top of it, so I don't blind myself as I'm looking into them. And I have them in an XY fashion, and I have them both pointing towards me. And that is how I currently light my videos. Currently, it's nighttime outside, and if I didn't have this lighting system and I was just using my bedroom light, my lighting would look more like this. So if I was very careless about my lighting, and so I just had natural lighting, so at the moment I've got my big artificial lights turned off, it's dark outside, and I've got my bedroom light on over there. So with that bedroom light, this is how my videos look, and so you can tell that I don't really, it doesn't look like I know what I'm doing, so let's get back to the good fancy stuff. If you're going to go with natural lighting, I highly recommend standing in front of a window and having the camera in front of that window. So this is the window, this is the camera, and then this is you. And the camera's pointing to the window, and the camera's pointing to you. Because the sunlight should be coming through this relatively big window, and that should light your entire body up. And that is the best way I would recommend if you're going to go with natural lighting and you can't afford big proper lights like I'm using right now. Some of you guys are now probably really curious as to what I see when I'm reviewing my videos because what you see when you're seeing my videos is that you're seeing this. You're seeing me and you're seeing my whole poster stuff. And you're seeing my whole poster stuff. And so what does it look like in my perspective? As I stand in here right now, as I look out this way, what do I see? This is basically what I see. Now I know that it's pretty hard to see, but this is what I see. So as you can see here, you can see this big T stand and it has the big lighting. If you look close enough, you can see that it's baking paper and so that diffuses the light so it's easier to see. And then right underneath here, you can see my tripod. And so my camera sits right up here. So in all my videos, my camera sits right up here. And so that is what I'm looking into whenever I see my reviews. I'm holding my camera right up to my eyes and so whenever I'm making a video, this is basically what I see. The only difference is that the camera I'm holding right now is sits on the tripod and I can see a viewfinder and the viewfinder basically shows me what the screen looks like so I can properly crop my videos. There you go, now you know what I see whenever I make my videos. Very different to what you see right now. And speaking of cropping videos, which is what I just said a second ago, that's another thing I like to talk about. The rule of thirds. Now, while it's good to have a very good background, like I definitely recommend using something like posters or maybe a DVD slash Blu-ray collection or something else like that for a good background. But one thing I also do is how you frame and crop yourself because how you crop yourself and how you frame the review actually does a lot of work to really show you how professional you may look. For example, you don't really look like you know what you're doing if you're filming your review and you're sitting like this, or if you're too close to the camera and you can't actually see yourself, you can only just see your chest. Or if I'm like somewhere out in this area, like you can see that almost my entire face is being chopped off the screen right now, and there's a lot of dead space over here. So one thing I highly recommend you try learning to pay attention to is this thing called the rule of thirds. There's this special guideline grid thing. Some cameras have them, some don't. My one doesn't. However, I do try and use intuition of where the grid and the lines would be. And so I use that to help me try and organize where about I stand and where I point the camera. 
because basically I take up these three squares for myself. I got my face in the upper two squares and then the bottom square is basically the rest of my body. And then I've got the other six squares taken up by my background posters and that fills up the entire screen with no dead space. If you just have nothing but dead space, you will look like an avatar who doesn't know what he's doing. It's sad, but it's true. So if you do something as simple as that, it will make all the difference. Another thing I do want to focus about is make sure there is something going on in the background, something bright and colorful. And the main reason why I say that is because since I have these two big posters, it basically fills up the entire screen. And so it's a lot more pleasing, a lot more pleasant to look at. So in the background, you can see lots of bright and colors. And so it's more pleasing to the eyes. But imagine if I was filming in front of nothing but a white naked wall. In fact, I have a naked wall just over there. And so I'm going to film in front of that for a second and show you what my videos would look like if I just filmed in front of a wall. I'm not fussy about the lighting, but this is just an example. But notice how the background now looks like it's just a naked wall. And it's very isolated, it's very lonely. It feels like a prison or a white void. It's just very plain and boring. Now, if you use a more sophisticated color like Cosmic Blue, it will make it more interesting automatically. So you definitely want to avoid boring, plain white walls because it feels like a prison and it's a lot more lonely. It's a lot more unpleasant to look at. I miss my posters now, and so I'm going to go back to my posters. See ya. <sighs> Much better. So now let's finish the video. Moving on from like uh, filming in the background and the lighting and all that stuff, I want to go into another subject. Editing. Now the editing process isn't really that big for me if I'm just doing a simple movie review or a simple video where I'm just talking to the camera. However, there are definitely some things that I like to work on. Not all of my videos, but there are some times where I look into stuff like colour correction. For example, if my video looks way too yellow or too yucky like colour, I can use colour correction to be able to reduce the yellow light colour and give it a more natural look. Another thing I sometimes do is saturate the colours and put more life into them. I don't do it a awful lot, I usually more do it for movies or short films when I and I do it to give it more personality and give it a more cinematic look. But I've really started to decrease doing stuff like that for my videos because I feel like I've been able to make it look pretty good with my lighting. But there is one really serious subject that I do want to talk about and it will make so much difference in your videos if you start doing that. And that is what are called jump cuts. If you don't know what a jump cut is, you definitely have experienced them before because they are everywhere in my videos. In short, by definition, a jump cut is basically in editing when you take out a certain amount of footage. For example, if you've got some footage and then you split and then you give two splits into it. So one split and one split here. And then you take out this middle bit and then you move these two bits close together. It's pretty hard to show you what I mean, but I've been demonstrating jump cuts throughout this entire video, especially during the jump cut section. A jump cut is basically when I am saying one thing and then suddenly, boom, I just cut to another shot. And another one, and another, and another, and another. And I'm gonna stop that now because it's getting weird. But that's essentially what a jump cut is. It's basically when you're cutting out a certain amount of the footage and you're bringing each bit closer together. And here's why I do that. This may come as a surprise to you, but when I make a movie review or any random video, sometimes, if not most of the time, more than half of the footage isn't in the final product of the actual video. Now why is that? For starters, I happen to make a lot of mistakes and I stutter a lot. I don't exactly stutter, however, I sometimes flip my message and not message, I flip my tongue and I sometimes keep on getting stuck and I have to re-say my sentences. What basically happens is that I will get stuck in a sentence, uh, stuck in the, kind of like that, and then I have to re say it again. Sometimes I'll make a mistake halfway through the sentence, and so I stop mid sentence and I have to say it again. And then when I finally do get it successfully, I go, I'm not happy with the way I pronounced that. And then I have to say it again and probably make 50 more mistakes on the way. And it's not just mistakes, it's also space in between sentences and words. What I mean by this is because when you are filming, I happen to do ums and ahs or just really long breaks of sentences or sometimes my video is abruptly interrupted 
as I am watching slash reading my notes on my iPhone. So in my movie reviews, I make a point and I go, okay, so I really like this thing about this movie and I explain why and blah, 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 blah. And then suddenly I abruptly stop and I pull out my iPhone and I start reading my notes. And once I have fully got what I want to say next, I take my phone out of the shot and continue talking. And you guys are now probably wondering, Corey, why don't we ever see the phone? Because those are the things that I take out and create the jump cut. Because could you imagine how weird and how slow my videos would be if I kept that in the final cut? Here is something what it would look like if I didn't do any editing and I didn't create any jump cuts. My videos would more be like this. And that is why I think the action for this movie is really, really good. The soundtrack is also really good in this movie. Yeah, pretty slow, right? Now imagine if I did take out that iPhone area, which I usually do. Here's how it now looks. And that is why I think the action for this movie is really, really good. The soundtrack is also really good in this movie. Much better, much faster, much more fluid, much more faster pace. And I am just doing this with my fingers because I can't click my fingers. So if you go, um, or, ah, uh, or you just have dead silence for a long period of time, you can take out that silence and you can go from saying one thing right to the next thing and have it more fluid and more natural, and it doesn't get interrupted with awkward silence. And it not only makes your video flow more naturally, but it also decreases the time on your video. I kid you not, I make so many mistakes and stutter a lot and spend so much time looking at my phone or just trying to figure out what to say next and had all these issues that I don't want to be in the final cut of the video. In fact, sometimes I would have around 40 to 50 to sometimes a full hour's worth of footage and by the time I finish editing it, I only use about 20 minutes of it. That's how much footage and how much mistakes I make. So a lot of the stuff that you're seeing, even in this video, is not going into the final cut. Even some of the most basic softwares like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker can do special stuff like this and it makes your video look a lot more professional when you do that stuff. All of you guys, if you're an aspiring film critic, go out and do it. Because yes, you will probably make mistakes because everyone does. I make mistakes even to this day. But the thing is, you can always learn from them. And if you keep going, you will get better, whether it's from personal experience or people giving you advice or anything like that. You will keep getting better. And so if you want to be a film critic but you're not too sure if you're capable of, get your camera or phone or whatever and start making movie reviews because that is the only way you can truly start doing what you love to do is just go out and do it. And if you keep going, if you have patience, because I've been doing this for two years now, and I can personally tell you, you will get better the more you do it. So keep practicing, keep doing movies, and just follow your passion. So if you want to review movies, keep reviewing movies. And just follow what you want to do. Follow your passion as a film critic. If you want to be a film critic, be a film critic. Well, thank you all for watching. I'm really sorry if you considered this to be a very long video. I do agree, this is a much longer video than my usual content. However, I just really wanted to get this stuff off my chest. I wanted to celebrate by um, just doing this special video for you guys. And I really wanted to help inspire other film critics by showing that you can improve. And I just want to encourage you. If you have a passion for movies and you want to share that passion and you want to uh, express yourself through movie reviews, do it. Get your camera and start making film reviews. Do not procrastinate about it. Because if you express your passion, Believe me, they will come. I seriously encourage you to keep following your passion if that's what you're passionate about. And so I just want to inspire you and show you that you will improve. It just comes with practice. And that's one of my main points for making this video. Not only is it to celebrate my anniversary, I just want to help inspire you guys because you inspire me. All of you people that you give me positive comments or you click like or subscribe or share, you are encouraging me to keep going and you're telling me that you like what you see. And so I want to pay back by saying thank you and encouraging you to continue following your passion. Okay, and after saying all that, I'm going to be honest, this video is getting way too long. And so I'm just going to say, hasta la vista, baby.